Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Kat. In this video, we're going to be diving into the new Photoshop Generative Fill Tool. And in this video, I will be editing some of my photos and trying a few things, maybe getting a little weird, and seeing if this tool could actually replace editors. Could this threaten photography? Could this tool end all things? Let's see. So first, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the new Photoshop beta installed. How you're gonna find it is going to your Creative Cloud. You're gonna to go to Apps, and you're gonna come down and you're gonna find this Beta Apps button here. And if you don't already have it installed, you're gonna to want to install an update, and then you wanna make sure your Photoshop is also up to date for it to work. So when you have it ready, just go ahead and open it through this portal here. All right, so let's go ahead and open some files. And what better way to use Generative Fill than to use Dr. Phil himself? So let's do, uh, let's see if it'll change his hair. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the area. And you'll notice this toolbar pop up, so you can move it anywhere. And if you want to, you can create here, Generative Fill. You can add some things in here. You can say add hair and then we're gonna click generate and let's see what happens. It does take a minute. So I've noticed that. If, so if you're in a hurry, oh my God, look at this. Let's move this out of the way. Look how bad that is. That looks like a toupee. Oh my God. Dr. Phil, I hope you're not watching. Also check this out. It gives you two other examples. So it gives you three versions for you to work with and you can find them right here with these little arrows. You can just click next. <laughs> And let's see the last one. Oh boy. As you can see where this is going, this Photoshop beta is not quite ready. And you can also find these versions here. So if you want to kind of preview them real quick, you can kind of glance right over here and see them. And um, you can give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down. I'm going to give this a big thumbs down. <laughs> I don't like that. So what we can do is just go ahead and delete this layer right there. Let's try something else. Let's zoom in here. And this isn't the best quality photo, but I just thought it would be hilarious to use Dr. Phil. We can take sections of a face. Let's see if it can get rid of his mustache. Let's just kind of highlight his whole face or no. Yeah, let's do a little bigger section so it has more to work with. Let's click on generative fill and then say remove mustache. This is exciting. Wow, wow, no, no, no. Oh my goodness, look how, oh my God. Do not do that, folks. That does not work. Would it just change his eye color? Only change eye color to blue. <laughs> Strange, oh my Lord. <gasps> Oh no, oh boy. All right, I had enough of that. Let's find, let's try a new image. Let's try to do something cool. All right, we're gonna try another photo. And this is Tyler in a dirt road kind of area out here in Florida. And it's just not impressive, it's just Florida. Let's see if we can change the background. So we can actually select the entire section, the background, and um, add mountain. All right, so my prompt is add mountains like a Colorado landscape. Let's see what happens. Oh no, what happened? Oh no, okay, why? Let's see the other tries here. Oh, <laughs> it thought this was a person. It, it fixed it. <gasps> oh no, what is going on? Whoops. Why? Well, look at the background though. The background is pretty rad. I do like that. That's not gonna do. You know what? What you have to do in this case is you need to preserve your subject layer so that this doesn't happen again. So I recommend duplicating the background and then taking your subject selection button here that they offer. Let's try and see how well it can select subject. It's a button away. Let's see if that's easy. All right, 
right, it kind of did. Let's see if I can, can I adjust? No, hold on. Hmm. Didn't really select the mouthpiece here. Well, and then here, it missed a, a spot. So it's not the best. Let's go ahead and um, create a new layer. If you are on a Apple, I don't know, it's Command J. Here it's Control J on a Windows, and you've created a new layer. So let's go ahead and hide the other layer so you can see what I mean. And see, it's not perfect. That's why we have to save and preserve the background. And I'll show you how we can rescue or preserve that little section later on. Now let's think smart here. Let's just remove him. And I'm going to explain remove subject. Let's see how well that tool works. So this is supposed to work better for this purpose, to remove objects um, better than the traditional Photoshop tool. So I, let's see, I would agree. That is really good. It even fixed the background. It intuitively knew that the road turns and it, I was there and it actually did turn like that. I like that. So now that we have removed all the unwanted objects, we can now go ahead and rasterize that layer because I'm going to, and the other layer, because I'm going to merge them down so it can actually apply. So now here they are. You can actually do this if you really want to. Look how good that was. All right, let's take a look at these layers again. So we have the original layer, the layer we have worked on and merged together, and this is the one we're gonna work from. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and pack on this layer and now if we select this whole area here, we can actually preserve our subject. Pretty dope, pretty good. Okay, let's use that. Now let's go ahead and add back Tyler. Ugh, yeah, this layer is not as good. So we're going to go ahead and All right, so here's a cute photo of me coming out of the water. I want to change the sky here. Let's see if I can add some things into the sky. So, all right, add a moon and a faraway galaxy and some twilight colors and stars far away. So let's see. Ooh, that's interesting. I don't see the moon. Oh, there's a moon. Oh, that doesn't really match. What about this one? That's interesting. I like the first one. Oh, well, I'm pleasantly surprised. All right, let's get really funky. So I'm gonna go ahead and let everything happen naturally. I'm just gonna let this AI figure out something. What is it gonna do for me? <laughs> wow, that is so weird. That is so weird. No. No. All right, let's try this photo. I am in Georgia and I wanted to add a waterfall here. I'm gonna use all this area and I want to add a waterfall. <gasps> wow, that's insane. Oh my God, let's try the other ones. That's pretty good too. And the last one, oh my God. Yo, okay, first one is nice. Yeah, wow, okay. I really think this one works the best. It really just blends in with the water really well. Oh my God, okay, so my conclusion to this whole AI generative fill is that it's gonna work really well for object removal and then changing a background if you could manage to clearly um, avoid your subject. It's not really all caught up to maybe the, the standard of realistic. It's not going to give you um, perfect hands and it's not gonna replace parts of the body or change you know specific things unless you really give it specific direction with um, highlighting and circling and selecting your subject 
and also with the description that you give the AI itself with your words. So it's, if you don't do those things, it's not going to give you a specific result. I think it's also going to be really helpful if you have some Photoshop skills to correct some of those mistakes. Overall, I think it could give a really nice framework or skeleton for you to work off of or manipulate further, but I don't see this as a tool that I could use for every single thing. You know, you still want to go in and do other actions, but I could really see this for vision boarding. How awesome is this beautiful scenery that I could visualize and dream of, you know, and then one day manifest. So if you are one of those visualizers, those big dreamers, and you want to create like this ultimate vision board of you driving in the coolest car or you know, riding the coolest motorcycle or whatever it is you want to do. You could probably do that with this. So again, you guys, it's not going to take your job. It's just a tool. Um, I've been finding a lot of AI tools actually pretty helpful. You just have to use them responsibly. Don't rely on them and always check and make sure that, you know, when you are using AI, you are using them responsibly. So what do you think about this new AI tool? this new generative fill. Is it going to take over? Is it going to take our jobs? Probably not. I think it's useful for a few things and a few things only. Nothing beats real Photoshop skills to have the job done and I think there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to use this tool to get an edge, to create something fantastic, I think you can and you should. You should explore it, sure. But I don't think it's all quite ready yet. It's still in the beta phase, so a lot could change. And with AI, that's the trend. Everything is just growing and changing so fast. And I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm curious to see where it goes and how we can apply all this for us and our lives in the future. With the world going crazy over AI right now, it's important to remember to be real and authentic and as much as you as possible, you want to deliver your most authentic self. So as much fun as it is to be in fantasy land and play in the AI world, remember that we're just going to be craving that authenticity even more, even more. I think that we can learn a lot more from this to make it more navigable just like when the internet just first came out and computers just came out and we started using these infant stages of computers, you know, when it all had the green screen or the green words and then we updated it and upgraded it and evolved and everyone kind of just picked it up as we went along. I think that's what's going to happen with AI. I want to know what you guys think about this topic. Leave a comment and let's start a conversation below and like the video and share if you loved it and thank you guys so much for watching subscribe and i'll see you in the next